And in this lesson, we'll discover the questions uh, in which you will find qui, que, or then quoi. Okay, so let's discover now qui. Okay, qui means who. Okay, so if you want to ask a question regarding someone, like in these two examples, so the first one, who is he? Qui est il? Okay, so remember the formal, the normal way when we start a question with qui, or then as we saw in the previous previous lessons. Okay, you will have to change the order and to put your subject il, he, here, after the verb. Qui est il? And then you make the liaison. Qui est-il? Who is he? Qui est-il? Qui est-il? Or then, let's see a little example here. Qui vient? Vient is venir. Uh, vient is venir. Yeah, is to come. Sorry. <laughs> so, qui vient? Who is coming? Avec toi? With you? Ce soir? This evening? Qui vient? Avec toi ce soir. So he's coming with you this evening. Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Okay. Um, if you pronounce them normally, remember that you will have to raise your voice a little bit at the end of the question. So let's pronounce them the normal way. Qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Okay. Second one is que, so qui, who, que, what, what, okay, and then we'll see two examples here. Que fais-tu, okay, face coming from faire, faire means to do, okay, que fais-tu, so what are you doing, what do you do, okay, que fais-tu, same thing here, remember, que, so you start a question with que, then you get to change the order, you get to put the subject after the verb, okay? Que fais-tu? And it's a question. Que fais-tu? Que fais-tu? Okay. And here. Que veux-tu? So, veux is coming from vouloir, vouloir, to want. Que veux-tu? What do you want? Okay. Que veux-tu? Regarder, regarder is to watch. À la télévision. Well, at the television. Que veux-tu? Regarder. À la télévision. So let's read it normally now. Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? Okay, so you can hear that I've been raising a little bit my voice at the end. And then the other option is quoi. So quoi means what as well. So you will tell me, oh, you get two what here. You get que and quoi. Yeah, for a good reason. Look at that. Well, tu fais quoi? So, uh, I've been just taking the same question as we had here. This, que fais-tu? What do you do? What are you doing? Okay, but then if you're using this quoi, then it does mean that you don't start the question with it. You just put it here, for example, at the end. Okay, tu fais quoi? It is exactly the same meaning as this question, okay, but then you can see that you just keep the normal order of the sentence, subject, verb, okay, in that case you definitely need to raise your voice at the end, okay, tu fais quoi, tu fais quoi, and then I took the same example as we had here, okay, tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision, okay, so let's raise the voice at the end to make it clear that it's a question. Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? Okay, so let's repeat. Qui, who, qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Que, what? But you start the question with it. Que fais-tu? Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? And then quoi? You don't start the question and it means what? Tu fais quoi? Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? In this lesson, we'll just focus on the short thing, but quite useful, les présentations. Okay, so the first thing, when you meet someone and you want to know the name of this person, well, that's the 
common question or the normal question that you will have to use. Comment, so how, vous, appelez-vous. Okay, we've been seeing uh, in unit one, if my memory is correct, the verb s'appeler, so to call oneself. Okay, when you introduce yourself, you use this uh, s'appeler verb. Okay, so that's the reason why it will look this way. Comment vous appelez-vous? Okay, so comment vous appelez-vous? So what's your name? How are you calling yourself? If you want a, a direct translation, but it's it sounds a bit strange in English, but then that's the question. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right. The other possibility that we've got is to keep the normal order. So, vous vous appelez, and then we put this comment thing at the end of the question. Okay. So, in that case, remember to raise your voice at the end. Vous vous appelez comment? Vous vous appelez comment? Okay. So, it is exactly the same question okay it is a bit less formal this second option okay because the first one is the classic option that we've got we start with how and then we change the order we put the subject after the verb okay but then it is more, I mean completely correct to, to, to ask a question like that vous vous appelez comment okay and then the other possibility would be quel est votre nom what is your votre no name. What is your name? Quel est votre nom? Quel est votre nom? Raise a little bit. Quel est votre nom? Okay. So let's see them one more time. Comment vous appelez-vous? Vous vous appelez comment? Quel est votre nom? All right. Uh, in the first example, we've been using this vous form, so the polite form that normally we should use when we meet a person for the first time okay but then let's uh, let's be frank that if you're young and uh, if you're meeting other uh, young persons then you can use this uh, to form uh, so the less formal way okay so the question will look like that comment tu t'appelles comment tu t'appelles okay well, then same option that we've got Tu t'appelles comment? So you put this comment at the end. Okay, don't forget to raise your voice because it's a beautiful question here. Tu t'appelles comment? Tu t'appelles comment? And then, quel est ton nom? What is your name? Quel est ton nom? Or other options. So I've been putting this, this option for this uh, tu Okay, you, the less formal one, and not for for the vous because uh, it is it is quite spoken this uh, this this way. C'est quoi ton nom? Well, if you want to translate it directly, it's what your name? Okay, it looks really or it sounds really strange in English, but still it's possible in French. Uh, it is it is not formal at all, of course. Okay, so uh, don't use that uh, if it's quite important or if uh, the situation is quite formal. Okay. C'est quoi ton nom? C'est quoi ton nom? Okay, and then if you want to, well, present yourself, then remember we're using this appeler, s'appeler, okay, to call oneself, okay. Je m'appelle, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, I call myself Vincent Lefrançois. All right, but then that's the, the, the way we use to present ourselves okay other option would be to use not to use this s'appeler to call oneself but to use to be which is totally possible je suis vincent le françois je suis vincent le françois i am okay je suis vincent le françois and then a third option mon nom my name okay mon nom est is mon nom est vincent le françois Mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. This lesson will discover uh, la situation de famille. So if you want to say what is your uh, situation, your personal situation, then that's the correct lesson to watch now. Let's start. Je suis 
célibataire. So I know that many of you will laugh when they will see this uh, beautiful célibataire word. It doesn't have any uh, other indication but the fact that you are single. Okay, so if you want to say that you are single, whether it's uh, the masculine form or the feminine form, it will be like that. Je suis célibataire. I am single. Okay, second option. J'ai un copain. Okay, boyfriend. Boyfriend would be copain. Okay, and then it's the feminine form here. Girlfriend, copine. J'ai, so j'ai, I have. Okay, j'ai un copain. I have a, boyf a boyfriend. J'ai un copain. Féminin, j'ai une copine. I have a girlfriend. J'ai une copine. Okay? So if you're in, in couple, en couple, je suis, I am, je suis en couple. Je suis en couple. So here you want to indicate that you are living with someone, but then you are not married. Okay? Je suis en couple. You can make the liaison here. Je suis en couple. Okay? And then, fiancé, engaged. All right? And then, here you've got the masculine form. I've been putting here the feminine form. All right? Uh, so you... lesson we'll see how to conjugate the verbs ending with er so not all the er verbs are belonging to the second group but some of them and then we'll see how to conjugate them at the present form okay so we'll take an example the example is finir so finir means to finish okay and then you can see that it's ending with er all right so we'll do it like that We'll divide it in two, so F-E-N, and then we take away this E-R ending, all right? And we'll just keep this form here, F-E-N, to construct the present. So you take it and you put it here, and after that you will add this ending. So for je, it will be E-S. Je fini. Remember, final S is not pronounced. Je Fini. Okay? Tu fini. So ES as well, like we had for je. So same way to pronounce it as well. You don't pronounce the final S. Tu fini. Il, elle fini. So IT, 
Final T not pronounced. Il, elle finit. So, je finis, tu finis, il finit. Phonetically, it's exactly the same form for these persons. Okay? So, it's quite good if you want only to talk and not to write. So, just focus on this fini form. You know that it's for je, tu, and il, elle. Okay? But then for nous, so have a look. Nous finissons. Okay? I-S-S-O-N-S. -S -S. sont. Nous finissons. Finissons. Okay? Final S, not pronounced. Nous finissons. Vous Finissez. Vous finissez. Okay? A Z at the end gives you the, the sound E. Okay? Finissez. Finissez. Vous finissez. Ils finissent. So remember, as usual, when we've got the verbs E and T not pronounced. Ils finissent. Elles finissent. Alright? So let's see them one more time. Je finis. Tu finis, il finit, elle finit, nous finissons, vous finissez, ils finissent, elles finissent. Alright, let's take another example. Unir, to unite. Okay, same rule, we just keep this UN and then you spot the ending, you take it away and you will keep the UN to construct, so j'unis, same way. Tu unis, il unit, elle unit, nous unissons, vous unissez, ils unissent, elles unissent. Okay, so it's the same, exactly the same, so same group, same way to uh, conjugate it. Okay, let's take choisir, third example, you spot it ending with ir here. Choisir means to, to choose, okay. Then, same way. Je choisis, tu choisis, il choisit, elle choisit, nous choisissons, vous choisissez, ils choisissent, elles choisissent. Then we'll discover together, well, the plural form, how to construct or how to make a, a plural form. So it's le pluriel en français. So let's start now. So we'll take this example, okay, basic example. A friend, un ami, un ami, okay, un ami. Okay, so here you can see that we've got this uh, article indéfini, un, right, the masculine form, singular form, and then we've got ami, friend, like that, uh, at the singular form as well. So if we want to construct the plural form, well, obviously the article will change. Okay, uh, we saw previously that uh, the plural article was de, in that case, and then we keep the same word, so ami, and the rule goes like that, you get to add at the end of the word s, okay, in that case, and as in most of the cases, you won't pronounce it, but you will have to put it, okay, and so you've got de, ami, Okay, and if you make the, the liaison, so the link between the two, you will get des amis. Okay, des amis. So, ami, remember, doesn't change. Even if you get to write the S, then you don't pronounce it. Okay, and now, let's see a few examples. So, this one, une femme, une femme. Okay, so if we think about the rule that we saw previously, then une is changing, and then the article become de, okay? Femme, you write it like it was at the singular form, and then you just add this S at the end, and as we said, you don't pronounce it, so you get de femme, okay? De femme. So une femme, singular, and then de femme, right? And then un homme, if we make this little link between the two, un homme, un homme, un homme, and then we'll put this word at the plural form, so same thing here, so this uh, article 
indéfini 1 is becoming day in that case and then you rewrite the word homme and after that you just put the s at the end you don't pronounce it so you get des hommes des hommes des hommes okay un homme singular form des hommes plural form okay and then i took uh, well this example with this article défini le okay so the the le livre le livre okay if you want to put the plural form then the article here becomes les so that's the plural form okay les and then same rule you just write livre and then you put s at the end but then you don't pronounce it les livres le livre les livres so it's quite interesting uh, in this example here because if you listen carefully le livre les livres so the only way to know whether it's singular or plural is to pronounce correctly the article in that case le and here les so it's really this le e uh, and then les e eh, that will make the difference between the singular form and the plural form okay as usual in French we've got exceptions so you get words uh, that will end with this e a u combination of vowels like for instance un o so remember when you get these these vowels like that then you get only the sound o okay un o so in that case, well, you won't add the S as uh, like we saw previously, but then it will be the rule is that you get to put X here at the end, but then same rule, you don't pronounce it. Des O, okay? Une O, des O, all right? Second group, words ending with A, U. Here is an example. Un tuyau. Okay, same rule here. You won't add S at the end, but instead of S, you will put X. Okay, des tuyaux. Same rule, you don't pronounce it. Des tuyaux. Okay, un tuyau, des tuyaux. So the only difference will be with the article because the word will be pronounced the same way. And then the last group is uh, the words ending with E, U, E. So let's take one example. Un feu. Un feu. And basically the same, same rule. You don't put S, but you will put X instead. And then you don't pronounce it. Des feux. Un feu. Des feux. Okay. There is another group of words so because normally uh, the words ending with the uh, OU like that here OU and then uh, the sound is OU okay normally these words just behave like the others so uh, you just need to put S at the end but of course as usual in French we've got few exceptions so I've been listing all the exceptions of the OU ending you know words that will well like we saw previously not take uh, s but then take x at the end okay but still as usual it's not pronounced so it doesn't really affect the pronunciation but it's just for you if you want to write them correctly at the plural form remember it's not s but it's x okay so the first one un bijou okay so i did put the translation here Pluriel, des bijoux. Okay. Then, un caillou, un caillou, plural, des cailloux. Okay, remember, you don't pronounce it. The, the, the final X. Then, un chou. Okay, remember, when you combine this C and H, you get the sound ch, ch, ch. Chou, un chou, pluriel, des Chou, ok. Un genou, un genou, 
des genoux. Un hibou, un hibou, des hiboux, des hiboux. Un joujou, un joujou, des joujou, des joujou. Un pou, un pou, des pou, des pou. Okay, so the good thing, if you remember carefully what uh, I've been introducing so far, is that the main main group of uh, words are actually you, you only need to add s at the end and then you well basically you don't pronounce the the, the the s or then the exceptions you will like these ones here you will have to add this x at the end but still you won't pronounce uh, the, the the x okay um, but still as usual we've got exceptions so a uh, few exceptions not that much but then uh, these exceptions are really really strange because it does mean that the pronunciation will change okay so we'll take this one un boeuf un boeuf and then at the plural well you just write it like we saw previously so you just add this s but then pronunciation changes quite much because you get des boeufs des bœufs all right un bœuf des bœufs all right then un œuf un œuf des œufs okay and we'll make the the liaison here to make it sounds more beautiful des œufs des œufs all right un œuf des œufs and then the last one, this is probably the, 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 the most strange one. Un oeil, un oeil, un oeil, des yeux, des yeux, des yeux, 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 okay? Don't pronounce the final X as usual. Yeux, yeux, des yeux, all right? Let's cover together le verbe Pouvoir. Pouvoir means uh, to can. Okay, so it's quite useful. And then we'll discover it because, uh, well, it's not a regular verb, so it's uh, it's always quite uh, quite interesting to take a few minutes to really work on it and uh, try to uh, remember the way it is conjugated at the present form. Okay, so the first form that we'll have is je, as usual. So je peux. Okay. Final X not pronounced here, okay, so you've got X but you don't pronounce it, so basically you get the sound peu, peu, je, peu, okay, so I can, je, peu, okay. Then, tu, tu, peu, same pronunciation and same, same uh, spelling or writing, okay, P-E-U-X, okay, you don't pronounce the final X, tu, peu, okay, je, peu, tu, peu. Peu. Then, il, elle, peut. So you will put T at the end, you don't pronounce it. Il peut, elle peut. Okay? So if you look carefully, you've got peu here, you've got peu here, and you've got peu here. Okay? So for the three first, or four, because uh, there is the feminine form as well, for the four, four first persons here, well, it's the same phonetical form. It's Okay, and then nous. So, a uh, classic ending for nous, this uh, ONS ending for nous. Okay, nous pouvons, nous pouvons. Okay, you don't pronounce the, the final S. Nous pouvons. Mm -hmm. Then vous pouvez. Okay, classic ending as well for the vous form. A Z like that. Okay, remember you pronounce it E, E. Okay, vous Pouvez, vous pouvez. And then plural form, ils, elles peuvent. Ils, elles peuvent. Okay, so uh, be, be careful because uh, as you can see, you've got this EU here, EU here, 
OU uh, here, and then it's coming back here as well. Okay, so the only OU OU that does connect to the infinitive here, pouvoir, it's only for nous and vous. Okay, so let's read them one more time. Je peux, tu peux, il peut, elle peut, nous pouvons. Vous pouvez, ils peuvent, elles peuvent. Okay. As usual, as usual, this ending, this e n t ending, you write it, you don't pronounce it. Okay. Peuv, peuv, peuv. Okay. So it's really useful. Uh, you should really, I mean, definitely know it by heart. Okay. So try your best. Uh, well, watch again this video if you need it, and then uh, I hope it will enter in your head quite easily. Okay, uh, let's see some example now. Je peux chanter. Okay, je peux chanter. So you can see that in that case when you construct a verb or sorry, you construct a, a sentence with uh, the verb uh, pouvoir, here you've got a second verb, chanter, and it means to sing. Okay, so I can sing. Uh, well, you should all the time put the second verb at the infinitive form. Okay, so when we talk about infinitive form, normally it's the basic form of the verb. Okay, uh, je peux chanter. Another example: Tu peux partir. Partir is to leave. You can leave. Tu peux partir. All right. Same thing here. Okay, second verb. Well, basically coming right after, of course, and then at the infinitive form. All right. Elle peut dessiner. Dessiner is to draw. Elle peut dessiner. She can draw. Okay. Elle peut dessiner. And in this lesson, we will try to focus on le verbe devoir. Devoir means to must. Okay. So it's quite useful. And especially, it's not a regular verb, so it's always good to uh, spend a few minutes on the conjugation at the present of this verb. Okay, so let's start now. Let's see, so le verbe devoir to must at the present form. Je dois. Okay, remember, final S is not pronounced. Je dois. O-E, when you combine the two, you get the sound wa wa wa. Je dois. Okay. Tu dois. Final S not pronounced. Tu dois. Il, elle, doit. Final T not pronounced. Il, doit, elle, doit. Okay? So if you have a look at these forms, phonetically, they are the same forms. Okay? So, doit, doit, and then doit. Okay? And then, nous is coming. Nous Devons, okay, classic ending, O-N-S for nous, okay, you just pronounce this on, O-N, this nasal, okay, and then the S, final S is not pronounced. Nous devons, nous devons, okay, nous devons, well, basically we must, okay, and then vous devez, remember, classic ending for vous here, a Z, but then you pronounce this combination of two letters, e, e, deve, deve, vous deve. All right, and then the last one, il doivent. So same thing, classic ending for the plural form, e n t here. Okay, but then you don't pronounce it. Doivent, doivent, elles doivent, ils doivent, elles doivent. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. Je dois, tu dois, il doit, elle doit, nous devons, vous devez, ils doivent, elles doivent. All right, so let's see a few examples now. The first one, je dois étudier. Étudier is to study, okay? So it's a verb. And then the rule in French goes like that. If you get to put two verbs in a sentence, like here, the second one must be at the infinitive form. So when we talk about the infinitive, it's the basic form of the, the verb, okay? So étudier, study. 
Je dois étudier. I must study. Je dois étudier. OK? Then, il doit choisir. OK? Same thing here. Choisir means to, to choose. OK? And so, I did put here the infinitive form. So, the basic form. IR form. Il doit choisir. OK? He must choose. And the last example. Nous devons répondre. Répondre is to answer. Répondre here. OK? Nous devons répondre. We must answer. Nous devons répondre. OK? We are going to discover together uh, European countries. So, les pays européens. OK? So, let's start now with les pays européens. And the first one. La Grèce. La Grèce. OK? So, remember. Gr, gr. And then this uh, accent grave like that open. Grèce. OK? La Grèce. Le Portugal. Le Portugal. L'Espagne. L'Espagne. OK? Don't insist on the final E because basically it's not pronounced. L'Espagne. 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 L'Italie. 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 OK, so we can see that for these two countries here, as they are starting with a vowel, like here, OK, as we saw in a previous lesson, the article is modified and then it's L apostrophe, like that, OK? Le Luxembourg. OK, final G not pronounced. And then when you combine this E, M here, you get the sound en, en. You don't pronounce the M at all. It's this nasal en, OK? Le Luxembourg. Le Luxembourg. OK? La France. La France. OK? A-N here. Nasal en, en. La France. OK? We continue. Les Pays-Bas. Final S here, not pronounced. Same thing here. Pays, pays, and then bas. Les Pays-Bas. Okay. Then, l'Irlande. Remember, this is E, and it should pronounce, it should be pronounced like E, E. Irlande. Irlande. Okay, A, N, en, D. And final E, not pronounced. Irlande. Le Royaume-Uni. Le Royaume-Uni. Le Royaume-Uni. OK. L'Allemagne. L'Allemagne. Nye, 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 nye. Remember this G, N, E. It can be quite tricky at the beginning to produce. I mean, the sound, ny, okay? But really, you should work on that because it's, it's quite, well, it's not coming all the time, but it's not rare. I mean, the sound is not rare in French, okay? Ny. L'Allemagne, l'Allemagne, okay? La Belgique, okay? Remember, Q, U, E here. You will get only the sound K, K, okay? Belgique, Belgique. So it's not Belgique, uh, not at all, okay? Uh, because it's only the K, K, Belgique, okay? Le Danemark. So same sound here, this K and then this Q, U, E. Well, they will produce the same sound here. Belgique, le Danemark, okay? L'Autriche, okay? Remember, sh, sh here. L'Autriche, l'Autriche, OK? La Suède, d, d, la Suède, Suède. Remember, uh, accent grave, it's really open. E, su, e, Suède, Suède, la Suède. La Finlande, 
I-N hier, nasal, un, A-N, nasal, en, and then D, final E, uh, not pronounced. La Finlande. Ok. L'Estonie, final E, uh, not pronounced. L'Estonie. L'Estonie. La Lettonie. So remember when you get this E uh, and then a double letter like that, T, T, okay, then you will have to open your E uh, and it will become E, LE, Lettonie, LA, Lettonie, LA, Lituanie. Remember in French, <coughs> sorry, H doesn't exist, okay, so you don't pronounce it and it's LI, TU, A, NI, Lituanie. La Lituanie. Okay, continues. La Pologne. Ni, ni, again. La Pologne. La République Tchèque. So remember, Q, U, E, K, K, Tchèque. La, and then here as well, République. K. La République Tchèque. Ok, la République Tchèque. Chypre. Chypre. So remember, we've got this Y letter here, but then phonetically, when you pronounce it, it's like I. Ok, Ch Chypre. Ok. Malte. Same thing here, you don't insist on the final E. Malte. Malte. La. Slovenie. Remember, you get this E uh, accent aigu here. It's E, E. Slovenie. Final E, uh, as usual, not pronounced. La Slovenie. Okay. La Hongrie. So remember, H doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. So it starts with O N, ON, ON, and then GRI, GRI. Final E, uh, not pronounced. La Hongrie. La Hongrie. Okay? Les nationalités. So basically I've been um, making uh, this uh, nationalities uh, lesson based on the previous uh, lesson. So leçon D. Okay? So I definitely invite you to check the leçon D if you want uh, that everything is uh, clear for you. Okay? But then les nationalités. And it's starting right now. La Grèce. Grec. So I will put each time the masculine form for the nationality. Grec. And the feminine form here for the nationality. Okay. So you get the country. La Grèce. And then you get Grec. Masculine form. Grec. Feminine form. You write them differently but then. If you listen carefully, grec, grec, you pronounce them the same way. Okay? Le Portugal, portugais, portugaise. Okay? So listen carefully. Portugais, portugaise. The only difference between the two, as usually when we'll have some, uh, well, nationalities ending with A-E-S, like that, E, and then the feminine form, as okay, it will be only in this z sound the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. Okay, masculine portugais, you don't pronounce the s, feminine form portugaise, you pronounce this z sound. Okay, and then l'Espagne, espagnol, nye, 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 remember, espagnol, espagnol. So you get this final E for the feminine form, but then phonetically it's the same. L'Italie, Italien, Italienne. Remember, when you get this E followed by a double consonant like here, then you will have to open it. E, Italienne, Italienne. Okay? Le Luxembourg, Luxembourgeois. Luxembourgeois, and then feminine form, Luxembourgeoise. Okay, same thing here, only difference, 
joie, 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 z, z. Ok, you insist on it. Luxembourgeois, masculine form, and then luxembourgeoise, feminine form. Then, la France, français, française, ok, c'est, and then says, ok, français, française, all right, it continues. Les Pays-Bas, néerlandais, néerlandaise, néerlandais, néerlandaise, ok. L'Irlande, Irlandais, Irlandaise. Le Royaume-Uni, Britannique. Ok, only one form, whether it's masculine or feminine. Britannique. L'Allemagne, Allemand, Allemande. Ok, same thing here. En, ok, you don't pronounce the final D, but then you pronounce it here for the feminine form. Allemande, d, d, ok. Allemand, Allemande. La Belgique, Belge. So only one form here for the masculine and the feminine form. Le Danemark, Danois, Danoise. Z, hein? ok, insist on that. Danois, don't pronounce the final S, Danoise, here you pronounce it. L'Autriche, Autrichien, Autrichienne. So same thing here, you get E and then double N, you open the E, E, Autrichienne, ok, Autrichien, Autrichienne. La Suède, Suédois, Suédoise, ok, Suédois, Suédoise. La Finlande, Finlandais, Finlandaise, Finlandais, Finlandaise. L'Estonie, Estonien, Estonienne, same thing here, double N, E, and then you open it, E, Estonienne, Estonienne. La Lettonie, Letton, 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 Letton. La Lituanie, Lituanien, Lituanienne. Same thing here, you open the E. E, E, Lituanienne, ok? Lituanien, Lituanienne. La Pologne, Polonais, Polonaise. Polonais, Polonaise. La République Tchèque, Tchèque, ok? So here as well. You get only one nationality, so whether for masculine or feminine form, it will be the same. Check, okay? Chypre, same thing here. Chypriot. She, remember this Y is pronounced like E, okay? Chypriot. Chypriot, okay? Malte, Malte. Maltese. So remember, as I said previously, the only difference est, es. Malte, Maltese. La Slovénie, so only one form here, Slovène. Slovène. Remember, E accent grave, you open it, est, Slovène. La Hongrie, Hongrois, Hongroise, ok, Hongrois, Grois, Hongroise, ok, so here final S not pronounced for the masculine form, and then you pronounce it here for the feminine form, Hongrois, Hongroise, ok.
Les Amériques. Les Amériques. So let's see now. Les États-Unis. Okay. So if we make every links, we'll have it here and then here. Okay. Les États-Unis. Les États-Unis. Le Canada. Le Canada. Le Mexique. Le Mexique. X, X, Mexique. It's really the X. Huh? Le Mexique. And then remember this Q, U, E, it's only K, K. Mexique. Okay? Le Brésil. Le Brésil. Okay, you will pronounce the final L here. And then remember, uh, accent aigu goes like E. Bré. Brésil. Le Brésil. L'Argentine. Okay, so you've got this nasal here. En. L'Argent. And then tin. Tin. Don't pronounce the final E. Uh, it just gives you the, the, the pronunciation of the N. In. In. L'Argentine. L'Argentine. Le Chili. Le Chili. Okay, remember. C-H. Ok, chi, chili, le chili. La Bolivie. Ok, final E, uh, not pronounced. La Bolivie. La Bolivie. Alright, so uh, I assume everything is clear. We can repeat them one more time. Les États-Unis, le Canada, le Mexique, le Brésil, l'Argentine. Le Chili, la Bolivie. Okay? And then we'll see now the nationality. So you will see here each time first the masculine form and then the feminine form. Okay? So, les États-Unis, Américains, so when you talk about the nationality, Américain, masculine form, un, un, Américain, and then feminine form. Américaine. Américaine. Okay, it's really open, this A-I. E. Américaine. Okay. <coughs> Le Canada. Canadien. Yen, 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 yen. Here. Canadien. Canadienne. Yen. Yen. Remember, E. Uh, here you've got double N. So you've got to open the, the E. Uh, so it will become E. Canadienne. Ok. Le Mexique. Mexicain. Un, here, like we had in uh, américain. A-I-N. Mexicain. And then, Mexicaine. Mexicaine. Le Brésil. Brésilien. Yen, yen. Brésilien. Like we had for Canadien. Brésilien. Feminine form. Brésilienne, yen, yen, brésilienne. Ok. And then l'Argentine. Argentin, i-n, gives you this un sound. Argentin. Ok. And then Argentine. Argentine. Ok, if you look carefully, well, basically the feminine form is the same as the, the name of the country. Ok. Le Chili, Chilien, Chilien, yen, yen, Chilien, Chilienne, Chilienne. Ok? And then, la Bolivie, Bolivien, yen, same, Bolivien, and then feminine form, Bolivienne, Bolivienne. Okay. This lesson will discover together le verbe attendre. So attendre means to wait. Okay. So it belongs to the third group of verbs. So not uh, the regular one, the irregular. So that's the reason why it's quite important to take a few minutes to uh, discover together the way to conjugate this verb at the present form. Okay. So let's see now how it will go. So the first form, 
will be j'attends j'attends okay you get d and s well basically you don't pronounce them okay and then you get only the the sound attends nasal here en en j'attends okay second form tu attends okay you can see that well it is exactly the same one so same way to pronounce it attends okay il attend elle attend so the only difference between this one so this il form and the tu or je form okay if you want to write it's just that if you look carefully you don't have the final s here okay but then basically if you want to only pronounce or only speak then uh, well it's exactly the same way to pronounce these forms okay j'attends tu attends il attend elle attend okay but then nous is coming here all right and then we've got the classic ending for nous so o n s okay you don't pronounce the s so you get only this on sound okay attendons nous attendons so we'll make the the link between the two la liaison nous attendons nous attendons vous form same thing classic ending for vous a z okay when you combine the two you get the sound e e okay vous attendez attendez okay let's put here the liaison the link vous attendez vous attendez okay and the last one same thing classic ending for il elle at the plural form e n t but then you don't pronounce them il attend d d d d okay so remember you get to pronounce this d d d d at the end okay elle attend all right if you make the link ils attendent elles attendent okay so let's read them j'attends tu attends il attend elle attend nous attendons vous attendez, ils attendent, elles attendent. Ok? So I've been making few sentences just to show you how it works on the meaning. J'attends le train. So le train, the train, I wait. Ok? I wait for the train, but then j'attends le train. Ok? Tu attends avec moi so you wait and then avec means with moi me you wait with me tu attends avec moi il attend sa femme okay remember sa it's the possessive his in that case and then femme wife il attend sa femme Nous attendons tranquillement. Nous attendons tranquillement. So here, I wanted to show you how it could work if you put this tranquillement. So tranquillement is uh, quietly uh, and it's uh, an adverb. Okay, it's ending with ment like that, which is one of the classic ending for the adverbs we'll have the time to to see that a bit later but then yeah quietly is tranquillement nous attendons tranquillement so basically you put this adverb after your verb okay nous attendons tranquillement vous attendez les enfants okay children les enfants vous attendez les enfants Elles attendent votre réponse. Réponse, answer, and then remember, votre, it's the possessive, your. Elles attendent votre réponse. Okay? So I will read them one more time, and uh, I will read them at my normal speed. Okay? Just for you to get used. If, because I, I've been reading them quite slowly when, when we were just uh, see, well, we were covering them uh, previously. Okay? So... J'attends le train, 
tu attends avec moi, il attend sa femme, nous attendons tranquillement, vous attendez les enfants, elles attendent votre réponse. Le verbe, le verbe répondre, répondre means to answer, so it's quite useful. And then, uh, well, it belongs to the third group of uh, verbs, so we'll see how to conjugate this verb, répondre, at the present form. So let's see now the first form. Je réponds. Je réponds. Okay, so you can see that D and S here are not pronounced. Je Répond. Ok. Tu réponds. Well, the same form. Ok, exactly the same form, so the same pronunciation. Tu réponds. Il répond. So, final D is not pronounced. You will only have this on nasal uh, sound at the end. Répond. Elle répond. Ok, so, je réponds, tu réponds, il répond, elle répond, ok, so, so far only one way to pronounce it, alright, then of course for nous, we've got the normal and classic ending O-N-S, ok, don't pronounce the final S, you only pronounce this on sound, so you get répondons, nous répondons, nous Répondons. Ok? And then, classic ending for vous as well. A Z. Ok? Remember, you combine these two letters, you get the sound E. So, répondez. Vous répondez. Vous répondez. Ok? And then the last persons here. Ils répondent. So, same thing uh, here, classic ending, E-N-T, but then you don't pronounce it, okay? Réponde, d, réponde, il réponde, elle réponde, okay? So, let's see all the form one more time. Je réponds, tu réponds, il répond, elle répond, nous répondons, vous répondez, ils répondent, elles répondent. All right.